Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. Um, last week I presented some interesting results relating a motor's torque, speed and power and discovered in fact that a motor has a peak operating point at which the power is a maximum. And what I mean by that is if you look at the relationship between the torque and the speed of a motor along this curve here, so as the torque increases, the speed decreases, you'll actually find that there's an optimal operating point at which the output power is a maximum. And today I'm going to be expanding on that result and looking at the optimal gear switching point uh, at which you should uh, change gears in order to stay within that peak power range and also look at the actual gearing ratio that should be used in order to switch uh, between the high gear and the low gear to keep that output power at a maximum. Right, so what am I talking about when I'm talking about peak power? Well, we can repeat some of the results from last week. When, uh, we've got the power equation which relates the power at the output of a motor relative to the uh, speed R and the uh, torque on the motor. Uh, now this graph here rela also relates the speed and the torque. Uh, what you find is, is that as the torque is increased on the output, the uh, speed decreases. So with increasing torque we've got decreasing speed and it's pretty much a linear equation. And we can model that equation with R equals A tor plus B. So that's the uh, linear equation that approximates that line. So we can then substitute r back into this equation. So we get 2 pi times a tor plus b times tor. Now we can see this is a quadratic equation and a quadratic has got a, uh, a maximum point. And by taking the derivative of this equation, setting it to zero, we can then solve for the tor that maximizes the, the output power p. And if we go through that mass, um, we can... You can see that in my previous video from last week, uh, we find that the peak power is when tor is equal to minus b over 2a. Uh, so that's the point at which the power is the maximum, and then we can substitute that back into the power equation to get where the power is at a maximum. So that's power peak, and that turns out to be simply pi times b times the peak torque. So this gives us the two equations that give us the peak torque uh, location to give us the maximum peak uh, output power for a motor modeled by this linear equation r equals a tor plus b. Okay so these are the equations that determine the peak power and the location of that peak power in terms of torque. Now it's easy to visualize that on a graph. So what I've done here is I've plotted uh, that same information on a curve. Uh, so we've got our blue line, which is the relationship between the uh, torque and the speed as uh, modelled by that linear equation. In this case I've used A is minus 18.2 and B is 375. That gives us an approximation to that curve. And also I've plotted the power output on the orange line. You can see here on the orange line that it's a quadratic equation uh, or a parabola and it's got the peak. And that peak, once we substitute those numbers, we find that the torque at which the output power is a peak is about 10.3 and the actual output power at the peak is around 2 watts. Now as you can see, uh, as the motor operates at different areas, so for example if you've got the motor driving a car or something like that and the output torque is increasing, uh, it might be driving up a hill or pushing some, uh, some things out of the way, uh, what you find is that as the torque increases the speed of the motor starts to decrease and the overall power uh, operational curve kind of moves along here. So once you go past the peak power, you find the actual output power is decreasing. And what you need to do is actually switch gears and bring uh, the motor back to a different location and on this operating curve. And now there's only one peak area, so it's obviously going to be very difficult to state that peak. So what I thought would be a good idea is to define a, an area we want to operate within where the um, operational power is at least a certain percentage of the peak power. So in this case here I've drawn an example where I've said that the overall efficiency I want about 80% which means I want to operate within 80% of the peak power which means I need to keep the operational point of the motor in this range here uh, to make sure I don't drop below that power point. Uh, so what that means I need to find these locations where uh, I need to switch gears and then switch back to here in order to stay within this operational area that um, I'd like to stay within. Okay, so how do we work out these operational points that we want to keep within? So essentially we're trying to find this location here, Tor 0, 
in tour one where the overall efficiency is greater than 80 percent or the, the power that we're operating at is at least 80 percent of the peak power all we need to do is first define the um, ratio of the power that we're operating at relative to the peak so we start out with the original power equation is equal to 2 pi times a tor squared plus b and then we've also got the peak power that we derived before is equal to pi b times the uh, peak uh, torque at which the power is peak now it's easier to substitute that back into this equation and what we get is the peak power is in fact equal to pi times minus b squared over 2a and then if we define the ratio of the power to the peak power so we've got the power that we're actually operating at relative to the peak power is equal to this ratio over that ratio we end up getting 2 pi a tor squared plus b all divided by that one so we need to flip that 2a back to the top so we've got a 2a up here and then we've got a minus pi b squared on the bottom now we can cancel out some of these factors and multiply through and we get 4 a times a tor squared plus b all divided by b squared and i'll just put the minus up here so this equation here is the, is the relative uh, ratio of the power to the peak power and we want to make that greater or equal to some efficiency ratio e so in this case i've chosen e of 80 percent uh, but of course you can choose e to be any value you can make it 90 percent 70 percent and what we need to do is solve this equation for tor to find those two locations and of course there's a quadratic equation in tor and it's going to have two solutions and if you go through the maths i mean the math is relatively um, i wouldn't say complicated but it's a bit lengthy so rather than going through all the steps here what i'll do is give you the answer and what you find is that the uh, solutions for tor are equal to the peak power times one then plus minus so we uh, add and subtract to get the two different points the square root of um, let's see it is one minus e so that gives us the two points at which we need to operate at to uh, keep within that efficiency e of say 80 percent or higher so it's relative to e uh, it's simply the uh, point at which the torques are peak and then we need to multiply through by either one plus the square root of one minus e or one minus so of course one minus is going to give us this point and one plus will give us that point okay so this equation gives us the two points at which we need to operate the torque at to keep the efficiency above a certain um, efficiency of e so in this case 80 percent and if we substitute the numbers we find that torque zero will be about 5.7 newton centimeters and torque one about 14.9 so essentially what we're trying to do is that as the um, output load increases on the motor we sort of operating across this point here we find that the output speed decreases the power kind of increases, and then starts to decrease and as soon as we hit about this point we're going to be dropping below that 80 percent power efficiency and we need to change gears and start operating back at this point over here so we need to work out the ratio uh, between this torque and that torque so, so when you change gears of course for example if you want to change from an output torque of 15 down to 5 you need to reduce the gearing by a factor of one third so um, what we need to work out next is the ratio of torque 1 to torque 0 to work out the gearing ratio that we need to keep within that 80 percent band so we can find the gearing ratio between this point and that point as g and g is simply um, torque zero over torque one and if we substitute in this equation there and put on the top line torque zero where uh, we're using the minus and then torque one which is the plus and we cancel out the torque peaks we find that the gearing ratio is just simply one minus one minus square root of e over one plus uh, one minus the square root of e
And so this equation here gives you that switching gearing ratio that we need to apply in order to keep within that operating point uh, efficiency E, uh, in this case of 80%. And what's interesting about this equation, in fact, it's independent of the variables A and B, which determine the relationship of the motor characteristics. So what this tells us is that in order to keep within a uh, operating efficiency of E, the uh, gear switching ratio should simply just be a function of E and it's not dependent on the uh, type of motor or the motor characteristics, uh, well, provided they're linear, of course. And so I thought this was a very interesting result. All right, so we can plot this equation on a graph and I've done that over here. So what we have here is the graph showing the power efficiency E versus the gearing ratio G. So that's again given by this equation over here. And in this table I give some example values for the efficiency E and the required gear switching ratio G. So for example at 70%, which is approximately here, we need a gearing ratio of 0.292. Uh, for 80% it's about 0.38. 90% it's about 0.519, so it's uh, sitting at this level. And 95 it's 0.365. So again, a uh, very interesting relationship. Like I said before, the optimal gearing ratio is independent of the motor type. It doesn't depend on the variables A and B. Now if you want to know the efficiency in terms of G, you have to inverse this equation. And I've done that over here. So what I've now got, instead of having G in terms of E, I've got E in terms of G. So if you know the gearing ratio that you're thinking about, you can calculate the power efficiency band. Uh, so for example, this curve ends up looking like this. Uh, and for some specific values of the gearing ratio, for example, one third will give us an efficiency of 75%, uh, two fifths will give 81.6, a half is 88.9, and three fifths gives 93.8. Okay, so the results I've presented so far have been for a large power functions motor. Uh, I've also done a similar calculation for the extra large, and what we'll find is that the main difference is the peak uh, power, where the torque is the peak is uh, more than double so in this case we've got a torque of 22 to get the peak power compared to a torque of 10.3 also find that the optimal switching points have changed so they pretty much doubled as well from the large motor instead of being 5.7 it's about 12.2 and 31.8 compared to 14.9 now we find interesting enough that the peak power isn't that much more it's two and a half compared to two watts for the large motor and that's simply due to the operating speed being a lot less for the extra large motor compared to the large motor. Uh, operating speed here is about 225 at the peak uh, versus about 380 for the uh, large motor. And I've done a similar calculation for the medium power functions motor. Uh, in this case we find that the torque is 5.8 for the peak power which is roughly half uh, of the large and the overall power is 1.2 watts instead of 2, so quite a bit less than the large motor. So the real pattern is in this uh, situation is really around the uh, peak torque. Uh, we go from 5.8 for the medium to 10.3 for the large and uh, around 22 for the extra large motor. Okay, so that concludes today's video. The main result I presented today was the fact that there is an optimal switching point to give a overall power efficiency greater than some value E. So for example, 80% you need to switch from this torque level to this torque level to keep within that uh, range. And I've calculated the uh, exact gearing ratio that you need to be able to move from this point to this point as given by this equation here. And one really interesting result is the fact that it's completely independent of those parameters A and B that determine the um, characteristics of the motor. So this equation applies for all types of motors that have a linear um, torque and speed characteristic. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.